So as briefly mentioned earlier, I mentioned a second calendar year bird. Um, so this is a, this is another second calendar year bird. This is a one of our Welsh females. And um, you can see with the satellite tag on her back there. Um, so you can see this bird actually visited Spain, which you can see the new molted feathers. So a young bird will molt in its second calendar year bird. It will spend all the winter with the same feathers it hatched with. And then in its early spring from about late March, early April, it will start to molt. Um, this is because first generation feathers or juvenile feathers are in poor condition. They're weak when they're made in the nest and they need to replace, replace those feathers to basically ensure they have a, a whole set of feathers and a, a complete wing to allow them to hunt. As a predator, they need to hunt on the wing. So to have poor condition basically makes it harder to catch. So it's, you know, it's, um, it's cyclical. So the, the better condition you're in, the easier it is to hunt, the better condition you stay in, if that makes sense. Um, so you can see the pale areas are basically feathers she had when she wintered in Spain. You can see they're completely bleached by the sun. Um, whereas the darker areas, uh, like the new, she's got basically completed all of her greater coverts, which is that bar that runs all across the secondaries. Um, and she's done her inner primaries. You can see the contrast between the new, new second generation feathers and the outer juvenile first generation feathers in the outer wing. There's a lot of contrast there. Um, so that's something just to be aware of when you're out in the field. Um, and this is a second calendar year bird breeding for the first time, whereas you'll see adults in pictures later on, which are in much better condition. So here's a really cool illustration of how females, their plumage evolves over time. Um, so these are some great photos supplied to me by Pete Morris and Graham Catley, a couple of them in there and my own. Um, so basically it denotes a first calendar year on the left hand side, which is a juvenile and how they evolve through their subsequent molts into the fifth calendar year plus, which you can see on the right hand side. Um, so hopefully on your screen, you'll be able to see the juvenile, which is essentially really cryptic on the left hand side, almost uniform in her appearance. So a great underwing cover, so almost uniform of one color, which is really cryptic, not overtly like, contrasting she's got a dark iris you can see a nice dark hood all of her wings are really coarsely marked um this the underside of those secondaries towards the base of the body they're dark and sullied uh, so basically she wants to maximize how cryptic that bird is because she's learning she's a young bird she essentially doesn't want to be predated and she wants basically just to survive her first winter she doesn't want any outside influence from, you know, intragill predation. So as she develops, so in the second calendar year, she starts to molt for the first time when she's at the nest. I mean, the male's provisioning her constantly with food. So she just thinks, actually, I'm not hunting for myself for the first two weeks. So I may as well reassimilate that keratin, that, that protein into keratin and molt through. So you can see there, she's got some retained outer, outer feathers and some new inners. Um, and she's just bleached. She's basically the first calendar year, that's basically been exposed to the sun and wear, and you can see the feathers have basically just abraded. So she finishes her molt in that year, spends her, her basically second winter in a better condition with a bit more experience and know-how. And then in her third calendar year, she starts to attain that real almost spotted appearance. So the greater coverts are beginning to get spotted, more sort of, how would you say, peppered with those rhombus dots, but she's, she's in that intermediate phase where she's not really contrasting she hasn't got that really bright iris so it goes from the dark in the young bird to the fifth calendar year at the very end which is the most experienced more mature bird who because she's experienced and had four winters for example she she knows the ropes so she can afford to be a bit brighter you know have a bright iris uh, she can be a bit more pro male in her features in the sense she becomes a bit more pale and on a ventral side a bit more hooded more akin to the male but not with the big diagnostic hand if that makes sense so it's it's a trade-off between feather condition experience um and basically like i know the ropes i know how to do this i know how to breed i know how to attract a male um so you can see the fourth calendar year and the fifth calendar year plus bird are really different to the first calendar year bird who basically just wants to survive her first winter 
Um, so that's it in a nutshell. It's a lot more complex than that. Um, but yeah, I just hope I can illustrate it sort of as an overview there for you. So we've touched upon uh, the sort of minutiae of the hen harrier feather topography, so to speak. Um, so let's just look at, for, for those people who don't really seem or aren't widely versed with all raptor species, it's good to concentrate on potential pitfalls in terms of their identification and birds they could be confused with. Um, so a really common uh, bird of prey that we can all see in the countryside these days, which is fantastic, is and one of my favorites is the common buzzard. So you can see an adult here on the left hand side, just this is from uh, my good Polish friend who runs Crazy for Raptors, the Facebook page, if you haven't seen it. Um, and then there's two juveniles that are facing the opposite way. So yeah, they are very similar in appearance, but if you break it down in terms of their structure, um, they're very different. So adults, common buzzard, tend to have a short tail and a really broad wing base. Um, and it all comes down to display in these birds and, and sort of just how they evolve into sort of an older bird. So you can see the adults have a big broad trailing edge, um, which is similar to the hen harriers in, in, in one respect, but that trailing edge carries on into the hand as a short, broad hand rather than a, a you know a narrow, really well fingered hand, if that if that makes sense. Um, and those big white flashes on the, the base base of their primaries and secondaries uh, are very diagnostic compared to the hen harrier. Um, they're transversely barred throughout the whole of the body and they usually have a dark hood you can see in the adults and a dark trailing edge to the tail um, with small sort of diffuse barring whereas as you know in hen harriers they have those really broad bars especially in the females that give them the ring tail as we spoke about earlier um, and they look nothing like adult males so really the buzzard is going to be a pit, pitfall for those ring tails which are the juvenile birds adult females um, and young males which we'll come to um, and just so you're aware juvenile common buzzards are naturally longer tailed and thinner winged so it's usually juvenile buzzards by their nature um, you're probably confused with hen harriers and buzzards have a tendency to loaf around the ground be it worming catching beetles they spend a lot of time lazing in a tree or on a post which is unlike hen harriers I mean the thing with raptors is they all do I mean, if, if you look into the, you know, real, real nitty gritty of raptors, they all do roughly similar things, but it's how long and how commonly they do those things, if that makes sense. So common buzzards will loaf around on post, as will hen harriers. However, common buzzards will do it for hours, whereas a hen harrier will sit and preen, maybe have a poo, um, stretch their wings and then fly off and quarter the fields, whereas hen harriers tend to, uh, sorry, buzzards will just sit there for hours on end. So it's just these little things, you know, it's worth taking notes and it's worth if you if you find a bird and you think, is this a hen harrier? It's putting all the suite of features together, you know, the rump, the ring tail, the way it's feeding, the way it's quartering, thin wings, long tail. Can you see a white rump? Um, and if you think all of these features tick the boxes, then you've probably got a hen harrier. If you've got a bird that sat on a post for hours on end, you see it there in the same place every day. And it drops onto the field, walks around almost like a dinosaur, uh, eating worms, and then circles high up meowing. It's more than likely a buzzard. Um, so, yeah, a, a super bird in itself, but, yeah, not a hen harrier.